Saw this 500 watt V-Bore windmill on Timu for 100 bucks, couldn't resist. So let's just check this thing out, give it a review and bench test it to see if it puts out anything remotely close to 500 watts. I'm gonna leave it unassembled for the bench testing and basically what I'm gonna do to bench test it is put my impact right on the end with a socket here and spin that baby as fast as I can with my impact and we'll see what kind of output we get. First impressions are actually pretty good. Uh, you know, I was quite surprised for a hundred dollars on Timu. I mean, the size and the bulk of it, you know, this this part alone without the fins on, the bearings feel okay. I mean, this this feels like a tapered roller bearing that that it pivots on. I mean, it pivots very very smooth with very little resistance. Uh, what I would do is, if you buy one of these, get in here, try to dissect it, and uh, grease these bearings up with full synthetic grease. If you can, I'll probably do it eventually or that'll be one of my maintenance items eventually here. And the whole body is made of a, a cast aluminum. Now, cast aluminum is, is good, but it's not as good as what we would call wrought aluminum or extruded aluminum or rolled aluminum. Cast aluminum, it's still pretty tough and it's tough enough for this application. The whole body, everything is cast aluminum. I'm not seeing much plastic on here. The plastic I do see is nylon, like fiber reinforced nylon in the fins. So that's a really good material too. This this particular model has three fins. As you can see, there, there's ones with five fins. I probably should have got the ones with the five fins because I think it would be better for lower wind conditions, basically. These three fins are probably better for high speed efficiency, but they're very sharp. I'm noticing how sharp they are, and that's really good for efficiency as well. The sharper these blades are, the better it'll slice through the air with little resistance. So th that's a good thing I'm seeing. Uh, it comes with this regulator rectifier. So basically, if you don't know how a windmill works, it, it basically works like your car alternator or any kind of uh, AC generator. Th these are all AC. They don't put out DC without being regulated and rectified. So when I spin this right now, what I will get is an AC voltage, a three phase AC voltage off these three wires here. And then in order to utilize this electricity we've got to regulate it and rectify it so we've got to rectify it to dc and um then a voltage regulator kicks the voltage down to uh 12 or 24 volts according to the paperwork on this this regulator rectifier uh, can detect whether you are powering a 24 volt system or a 12 volt system it says it has an intelligent ic in there like it says 12 to 24 volts auto on there as you can see some of the specs this is exactly like a motorcycle regulator rectifier and one thing i've learned about motorcycle regulator rectifiers over the years is you want to try and keep them in the wind especially if you have a if you're if you're going to try one of these and you have a really high wind area with constant high wind um, you want to keep these cool because they heat up and there's there's actually a quite a bit of efficiency and energy loss through these especially if you're kicking it down to 12 volts because these things when we'll test it here but when when these are spinning the ac ac voltage on this one so far i mean it gets up to 60 volts plus for each leg so it, we're cutting 60 volts ac all the way down to 12 or 24 24 would probably be better if you're running this off 24 but yeah let's see um i'm going to try and hook up hook up to this and spin it without the regulator rectifier hooked up and we'll see what kind of voltage we get all right i've got my uh, ac multimeter at 200 volts hooked up between just two of the phases. Uh, these are sine waves that are 180 degrees out of sync or completely out of sync with each other. So this will read it almost like it was 220 volts. 73. 73 volts, that's crazy. So that's just between two of the legs as fast as my meter or my impact could go. If these things make AC voltage, why can't we just directly use the AC voltage? And it's because the frequency wouldn't be consistent. So that's the amount of times the AC waveform goes up and down per second. And here in America, we run off 60 hertz. And this thing isn't going to spin at exactly 60 hertz. And frequency is a big deal. You know, sometimes it'll be at 60 hertz. Sometimes it'll be at 90 hertz. Uh, it depends on how many RPMs. This, this motor is running at in the wind. So we can't directly use that AC power unless this is uh, perfectly controlled and regulated the speed of it. That's why we have to kick it down to the DC and then use the DC power and convert the DC back to AC. It's a huge efficiency loss and it sucks, but it's just the way it is. Other thing that surprises me is we actually have pure copper wire on this. I really expected 
to see aluminum copper coated wire. You find that a lot with uh, cheap electronics, especially, you know, a hundred dollar windmill. But these are actually pure copper wires. I don't know if the, uh, the rotor or the stator is wound. Either one is wound with uh, pure copper inside. I haven't cracked this open. I'm not going to crack it open in this video. But I'm going to hope that it does. And this is basically, a, this is a permanent magnet generator. So, so either the rotor or the stator either has permanent magnets. It's probably the rotor uh, has permanent magnets. And every time those magnets pass over the copper windings on the outside of this, it, it, it induces an electrical voltage through those windings. It's pretty cool. Uh, the effect, I think they call it the Faraday. No, I don't call them. I'm not even going to guess at that right now. But when you pass a magnet, something magnetic over a, a copper winding, it creates a voltage. And that's how uh, this windmill essentially works and they claim that these this actually has two bearings so this uh this input shaft here has two bearings inside i don't know about their quality. they're probably low quality bearings um, that's why i recommend the full synthetic grease on this particular model for a hundred dollars on timu doesn't come with a stand pole it only comes with this right here it's just a bracket to secure it to your own pole it's like it's an inch and a half yeah an inch and five eighths i was really close so an inch and five eighths dead nuts inside diameter on that this so the outside diameter of this yeah inch and five eighths so just over an inch and a half and this is what you get so you got to find like a inch and a half or inch and five eighths pipe or something close to that so we're going to hook it up to the regulator rectifier now it doesn't matter uh these three blue wires and these three blue wires can connect it doesn't matter which one goes to which you can have them in any order as long as you don't connect these blue wires coming out to this red or this black wire. These these are our DC output wires basically. Connect it backwards is probably going to cause a lot of damage. Got my multimeter connected to the regulator rectifier on the DC output. I'm going to I'm going to basically test for voltage with no load by spinning it with my impact again and we're going to see what we get for voltage with no load. like a car alternator around 14.4 volts everything's vibrating off the table i better clamp this thing down with a board right now i've got my dc amp meter connected to the output it doesn't matter which side i just have it on the positive side and i've got these jumper cables that are basically soldered with they got pure copper soldered directly to the line and they're really thick so i don't i know i don't have any resistance in the jumper cables i was going to use these clamps but the uh the ends might have resistance and it might limit our current and I didn't want that to happen for this test so basically I'm going to spin it with my drill because we'll have less vibration it might be lower rpm less vibration we'll see uh, what kind of amp output we get on this clamp meter our 112 volt battery is is a little drawn down it's at 12.5 volts we want it at 12.7 volts or around there to be fully charged so it will take current um, I don't think that'll be a limiting factor in our current and we'll see what kind of uh, amps we get here. Oh, battery's dying on the drill, but we got, what do we get? Seven amps as a max? Okay, I'm gonna try it on the impact now. It might, it might chatter with load though, I'm gonna see. So as fast as I can spin it with this rigid impact, I am basically getting almost eight amps out of it. I'm gonna try this smaller impact, see if it goes any faster. Not at all. All right, I can get like eight point something amps, so almost 10 amps. I looked up the RPM, the max RPM of this. Without it being under load, it's 1800 RPM. So, so it's probably spinning around 1400 RPMs under load, like on this windmill here, and we almost got 10 amps out of it. Let's round up to 10, and we'll multiply that by our output, or by our DC voltage. So, so 10 times 12 would be around 120 watts. So, so that's what I'm getting for an output, just bench testing it. Nothing's warm. This is a little warmer actually, just off that little bit of generation. These things get hot. And I would guess 
that this regulator rectifier here, just because it comes with a unit, is very inefficient. So I might actually look into uh, better regulator rectifiers for this unit. I'm going to see if I can put two of these lead acid batteries in series. Now a big thing on the instructions for this, it only recommends connecting to AGM or lead acid batteries. It does not recommend connecting to lithium. If you hook these up to lithium, make sure that you have some kind of protection for your BMS on your lithium. Uh, there's got to be a reason. This thing probably has a, a, a weird output or something like that that could potentially damage lithium batteries. So maybe a, a, a filter capacitor between this uh, regulator rectifier capacitor with an inductor, a low pass filter type of deal. All right, we've got two batteries down here hooked up in series. They're not the same capacity, but for this test, it should work. I'm just gonna try and, and, and test this thing with a 25 volt output. Hopefully it automatically adjusts. We're gonna read the amperage. I got around 25 volts when I measure it up here, 25.3 volts. So we got, it was different this time. It wasn't as smooth. It, it's, it was like there was waves of resistance in the, uh, the windmill at 25 volts. That's just funny. That's funny with an output when I'm connecting it to 24 volts. So I got around the same amperage and pulses at 24 volts with this thing hooked up to 24 volts, uh, which means our, our wattage doubled. So we got around, we got over 220 watts at probably at least on the output, on a DC output at 24 volts, but it started pulsing really weird. Now that could be my two dissimilar batteries because they are different capacities maybe. I, I don't know, but I, I suspect it's this really cheap, janky regulator rectifier that comes with this. So what I'm probably going to do is run this thing at 24 volts. It seems to consistently produce a higher output at 24 volts, which I suspected because the higher your voltage, the higher the efficiency, the less this regulator rectifier has to work or the right, whatever you have that's going to regulate your windmill. Um, so, so I would highly recommend running it at 25 volts or 24 volts, but not with this regulator rectifier. Maybe ditch this and buy a different kind of charge controller or make it or if you have if you're savvy in electronics make your own full bridge rectifier with a with some kind of voltage regulator you know a better design or find one i'll probably be hunting for one or else i'll make my own just for tits and pickles i've i've hooked this little 30 watt led light directly up to it i wouldn't advise this it'll probably burn out the light but i just want to see if it'll power this load oh my god yeah at barely any rpms See how slow that's? Wow, that's bright too. So I've got this Timu car jack. It's, a, it's an electric hydraulic car jack that runs off of 12 volts. I was able to find that. And the air compressor says it pulls 120 watts, just the air compressor alone. So I'm gonna see if I can use this air compressor and just solely powering it off this, uh, this windmill. That it, so it's hooked directly up to the regulator rectifier here and we're gonna see if it works. This is kind of risky. I hope I don't burn out my, my electric jack here. Oh, wow! That's pretty impressive. All right, let me try the jack side. That's cool. Wow. So you can see here, the jack pulls around 180 watts, but that's probably under load, 15 amps. So that's really not bad that this thing runs it at 12 volts or 14 volts in real time. I'm kind of impressed. Here's the catch. I know these regulator rectifiers get warm. I mean, this one's warm right now just from the little tests we do. But if I rectify it up near the windmill, which this is meant to be exterior, you can tell it's a sealed, it's all sealed. It's got that coating over the circuit board, so it's meant to be outside. But it would be more efficient for me to shoot the AC all the way down to the ground, especially if I'm putting it way up there and to rectify it closer to the ground or closer to where my batteries are 
and then you know or, or right at the batteries but the problem lies within keeping this cool so I'm, what I'm going to do is probably continue to use this for the time being after I get it mounted but I'm going to mount this so I'm going to try to mount this to a big heat sink a big hunk of copper or a big hunk of aluminum or or maybe uh, some get some little fan some li really small fan on it maybe with some temp control I don't know I haven't thought it up yet but just wait for the uh, for the actual installation video to come out I promise you I will install it as soon as I can and we'll see what this baby can do up in the air this is the one I got FA 200 V4 basically from Timu 100 bucks not bad purchase for 100 bucks we'll see how she does when I, when I hooked it up to, to the 24 volt you know the two batteries in series I think the pulsing was from my battery voltage. Maybe the batteries are too charged and, and something weird was going on between the do, two different uh, capacities between the batteries to make the, uh, the regulator rectifier you know, pulse like that. It would be unfair of me to automatically assume it's the regulator rectifier's fault. It's probably my fault. But either way, it still works great at 12 volts. Um, I know we at least pulled 100 watts in real time through it uh, you know, to multiple devices, including a, a, a semi dead battery that needed to be charged um, overall yeah I would recommend this especially if you're in a high wind area this is just the bench test I'm gonna get it up in the air as high as I can and we'll see what it does after that I promise to upload a video when I do get it way above the tree line I'm gonna go up into a tree and get it way up there I'm thinking I'm gonna add some poles to it maybe a couple poles or at least one pole and put it at the top of this pine tree what I'll do is I'll climb up as high as I can with my ladder and trim the branches off and mount it to one of these trees and get it above that tree line or try to so I can really catch that wind and then we can really give it a good test and see exactly what it's going to do. Thanks again for tuning in. We're gonna be doing a lot more of this type of testing. I'm setting up a big off-grid electrical system out here at my lower camp or my lower property. And uh, we're gonna be testing a lot of things, inverters, um, solar panels, all that I'm gonna be really delving into off-grid solar and, and off-grid electrical systems and what's the most efficient I'm going to be doing it on a budget so we're going to try and do everything around a thousand bucks maybe you know give or take um, but this this right here was a hundred bucks on Timu I'll flash it on the screen 500 watt Vivor windmill 